Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. We are talking this weekend about the wonderful, wonderful, amazing present day ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And how Jesus said, it's going to be better for you, he said to his disciples, it's going to be better for you if I go away, because if I go away, then I'll send the Holy Spirit. What a statement. <laughs> I'll send the Holy Spirit to be in close fellowship with you. You see, Jesus was with them But the Holy Spirit was now going to come and live in them. With is good, but in is better. Amen? The closer, the better. I'm sure glad when I need God, I don't have to go look for him. I don't have to try to find him anywhere. He's as close as close can get. It's very important for people who want or need a relationship with God to realize that when the Bible invites us to receive Christ, it says that we must be born again. That literally means that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, comes to live in us, and he makes us new on the inside, and then what's in us, through the help of the Holy Spirit, works its way out of us, so it can do some good to the people out here in the world. You know, it doesn't do much good for us to just sermonize everybody. We need to show them something. And you know, we want to be good. We want to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. I'm quite sure that all of you in this building tonight and those of you that have bothered to watch the TV program, you're, you're wanting to do what's right or you wouldn't be watching and listening to this kind of stuff. But the truth is, is We cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our strengthener. He's the one who teaches us. I'm a, I'm a teacher, but the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And see, I'm a firm believer that even what you get from your teachers, you have to take that home and get before God with it and trust Him to really let that information become revelation to you in your life. Can you understand that? It's not good enough to just get information. I mean, you can turn the TV on and get information. I'm talking about spiritual information. I mean, most of you probably have this. I've got a Bible on my phone. It pops up a scripture every day. And, you know, you can just, you can just get the word all over the place today. And sometimes it concerns me because I think we have a lot of information but not enough revelation. And uh, because when something becomes revelation, then we begin to do it. It becomes a reality in our life. When it's just head knowledge or information, then it doesn't always work for us. So we need the Holy Spirit to really be the teacher in our life. The Bible says in John 16 that the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. And let's just think about that for a minute just from the standpoint of recovering from past things that have hurt us. You know, most people, to be honest, when they come to Christ, they come because their life is so messed up, they don't know what to do with it, and they've tried everything they know how to do, and nothing's working, so finally, in desperation, they give up and ask God to help them. It's a shame that we have to do it that way. Not all of us do it that way, but most of us come to God because we're needy, and we need help. And um, he doesn't mind helping us. He wants to help us. He wants to heal us. But then he doesn't want us to forever be in recovery. He wants us to recover and then get busy helping somebody else. But part of this healing process that takes place in our life, we really need the ministry of the Holy Spirit during that healing process because he guides us into truth. He leads us to things one step at a time that may be hard for us to face, but they help us come to the next level of victory and healing. An example, my father sexually abused me. When I left home, I thought, okay, that's over. Getting out of here, that problem's behind me. Well, I got away from the problem, but I took the problem with me. It was in my soul. It was still affecting my thinking, 
how I operated emotionally, all my relationships, even my will. I was very rebellious and stubborn because I'd been hurt and just promised myself that nobody was ever going to push me around again. So when I was introduced to the power of the Holy Spirit and I began to study the scripture and find out there was power available for me, a healing process started in my life. You know, we can have Jesus inside of us, but he wants to get out through us so the world can see him. Do you know believers are the only hope that the world ever has of seeing Jesus? Did you hear me? I said believers, Christians are the only hope that the world, that the lost miserable world has of seeing Jesus. If you work with an office full of unbelievers, even if you're the only believer there, you should be absolutely thrilled to no end to go there and represent Christ to those people because you may be the only Jesus that they will ever see. Amen? And so I had all these problems inside, but I wasn't dealing with them. So now I had the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'd been introduced to that power. I was learning lots of good things. And... Uh, uh, one day, my husband brought home a book that he had bought at a conference that we'd been at where a woman was teaching who'd been hurt like I was in her childhood. Her father had also sexually abused her, and she'd gone through one man after another and gotten into prostitution and all kinds of things. And, and uh, she had a book that she'd written about how she had recovered through Christ. And my husband bought me that book. I didn't want the book, didn't intend to read the book. That problem was behind me, you understand. I had walked away from that problem. That was not... I didn't want to talk about that, didn't want to think about that. We're not going to bring that back up. See, a lot of times, we, in order to be free from something, we, we can't just run from it. We have to go back and face it with the Holy Spirit. Come on now. We have to go back to the places we ran from, get back into those doors that we slammed shut. But thank God we don't have to go by ourselves. The Holy Spirit takes us there, and He walks us through those things. Because anything that you run from always has a certain amount of power over you. Let me say that again. Anything you run from always has a certain amount of power over you because anytime it rears its ugly head, you've got to run some more. But once you face it and conquer it, then it no longer has power over you. Now you have the upper hand, it doesn't. So I had to face some things. I had to face the fact that my parents didn't love me, didn't know how to love me. I had to face the fact that I had been abused, that there was a lot of pain in my life because of that. I had to face the fact that I had a lot of weird, goofy behavior because of what had happened to me and that it wasn't everybody else's fault that was in my life now. You know, sometimes when we've been hurt way back here somewhere and we're still carrying all that pain around with us, then we want to blame all the people that's in our life now and we're trying to make people pay that shouldn't have to pay for what somebody else did to us. So I opened that book and read the first page. And I didn't like what it said because all these feelings and memories started roaring back up out of my soul and I took the book threw it across the room and I said out loud I will not read this and I mean the Holy Spirit so gently spoke to me and this is what he said it's time it's time and to be honest with you none of what I'm saying to you right now is even remotely close to what is on my notes. I didn't have any intention of saying this when I opened my mouth. So let's just take it that God is trying to talk to somebody and maybe he's trying to say to you tonight, it's time. Maybe somebody way up there, it's time. It's time. You see, we might think, well, I don't think that I can face that. But see, the whole point is, is you're not gonna have to do it alone. Because you're going to have the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God is going to be with you every step of the way to walk you through the thing and bring you out in victory. And so recovery takes a little time. The restoration of our soul takes a little time. But one step at a time, the Holy Spirit guides us into truth that sets us free.
The ministry of the Holy Spirit is just, it is just such a disgusting shame when people spend their whole life in church and never know about the, the close fellowship that they can have with God through the Holy Spirit and the, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to them. It is just, it, it just makes me mad and it makes me spiritually angry to think about how many years I struggled when I could have had the power of the Holy Spirit if somebody would have just told me. And so I do not want to be guilty of not telling people that there's power available to them. You cannot do it by yourself, but truly, and this is not just a scripture cliche, all things are possible with God. Amen. So we have the Holy Spirit now. If you're a believer in Christ and you're open to just being ever filled with the Spirit, it's a wonderful gift to have. But the Bible teaches us a couple things that should put a little bit of reverential fear in us. You know, there's a wrong kind of fear, but there's a right kind of fear that we should have. And the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is to have reverential fear of God. And that's a respectful fear that says God is not to be messed with. Amen. I mean, for example, in Galatians it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that and that only he shall reap. So in other words, what's he saying? Don't think you're going to get by with stuff. Because I mean business. And so when God says, if you do this, you'll be blessed. And if you don't do this, you won't. He means it. So there's a couple things that the Bible talks about that I think is very important. If we want to protect this precious anointing that's on our life, and if we want to keep it, see it grow, and have a full release of it in our life, then the Bible says that we need to learn not to grieve the Holy Spirit. That's in Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve, vex, are sadden the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed and branded as God's own. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, it says, do not quench or suppress or subdue the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Some of the things that grieve the Holy Spirit are just the way we talk. Matter of fact, let's just look at Ephesians 4, 29, because I'm not sure you believe me, so let's just look at it together. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace to those who hear it. So when we say things to other people that are mean and hurtful and, and unkind and tears them down and hurts them, that grieves the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what you got to understand. If the Holy Spirit is in me and in you, if we, if we grieve him, then we feel that grief. If we sadden him, then we feel that sadness. So let me just present it to you like this. A lot of people who go around with this so-called heaviness or I just, I'm sad. I don't know why I'm sad. I can't seem to get rid of this sadness. It's very possible that you are grieving the Holy Spirit. And that's his way of letting you know, I don't like this, but, and I don't like it because it's not good for you. <laughs> I don't like this, and I don't like it because it's not good for you. Everything that God tells us to do or not to do, it's not for him, it's for us. And the quicker we learn that, the easier it's going to be to have more obedience in our life. And then verse 30 says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And then verse 31, let's just look at just a little bit of it. It's pretty long, but you'll get the point real quick. So let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, resentment, anger, animosity, and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> 
So in other words, he's talking here about anger and temper and unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment and all these poisonous emotions that we tend to hang on to. And it gets so easy to forgive other people completely and totally and quickly if we would just remember what all God has to forgive us for. Well, surely you don't expect me to forgive you again. You've done that four times. Well, how many times do we do the same thing with God over and over and over and over? And so anyway, you, you understand that. I don't have time to camp on that. And then 1 Thessalonians talks about not suppressing or subduing or hindering the Holy Spirit. So I just want to continue to talk to you about some of these things tonight. And we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Wow. Is there anybody here tonight that could use a spirit-filled personality? Oh, glory to God. So I... I, I I pray this over my life. This is, these are some of the things that you can do that help you just really stay filled and focused on the power of the Holy Spirit. God, fill me afresh today with the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit doesn't go anywhere, so for all intent and purposes, you know, we're not talking about getting filled over and over, but the Bible says in Ephesians, be ever filled with the Spirit. And I kind of make a joke out of it and say it this way, one day in the world, a lot of the power leaks out and you need a fresh tank every morning. But think about that. If you're strong enough inside, then you can handle anything that comes at you from the outside. I said if we're strong enough on the inside, then we can handle anything that comes at us on the outside. I mean, we can be kind to grouchy people. We can be patient with people that are just driving us right up the wall. You know, the, the world is a pretty rough place today. Has anybody noticed that? The world's just a pretty tough place, and I'm telling you, to, to take a stand and really represent Christ out in the world today, I mean, I think we need the full power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to, to help us do that. And even all these other things, you know, this like talking right, that takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Not being angry and bitter and resentful and all those things, that, that requires the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not just something that I can read and then go try to do and whoop, it happens. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, God is so determined that we're going to trust Him that He actually will not let anything in our lives succeed if we don't lean on Him. Come on. We've got to trust God and lean on Him. So we need this presence and power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Spirit-filled personality. Wow. You can just come to one of my conferences anytime you want to. Turn the TV on any morning and get a little personality fix. <laughs> Ephesians 3.19. And Paul said, I pray that you might really come to know Christ practically through your experience for yourselves. That you would know the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. And now watch this that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, that you might have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. So here in two verses, I get a spirit-filled personality and I can just become a body wholly filled and flooded with God. Now, what would happen out in the world if every believer went out every morning with their tank full of that? Come on. You know, if you drive your car with no gas, you're going to have a breakdown on the highway. And if you try to get out in the world and live your life with no anointing on your life, you're going to have a breakdown in life. Think about those scriptures. Strengthened in the inner man with the mighty power of the Holy Spirit 
filling our personalities. Wow. You know, we need to look at our personalities as a dispenser for God. God works through our personalities, through our minds, through the way we treat people, the way we talk. He works through our bodies, through our hands, through our feet. God works through people. And so let's look at our personalities as just like a dispenser for the Holy Spirit. Well, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When the Holy Spirit is in our life, that's what we're supposed to see. <laughs> the seed of all that fruit is in us, and if we'll cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit, then that seed will grow and develop, and, and we'll just be these sweet people. <laughs> Loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, good, kind. And boy, is the world going to stand up and take notice. Has anybody noticed that the church is not impressing the world too awfully much these days? And it has nothing to do with the building. It's the people. We are the church. And they're not impressed with our bumper stickers and all of our Christian jewelry, all of our translations of the Bible. They want to see fruit, fruit. You will know them by their fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness. All right, now this is, this is an amazing verse of Scripture right here. I read this for years and didn't understand it and actually kind of just felt sorry for this fig tree, but I finally got it. <laughs> verse 18, and in the early dawn of the next morning, as he, he being Jesus, was coming back into the city, he was hungry. Everybody say, he was hungry. <laughs> now say, the world is full of hungry people. <laughs> and as he saw one single leafy fig tree above the roadside, he went to it, but he found nothing but leaves on it. Then the Amplified Bible says, seeing that in the fig tree the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. And he said to it, never again shall any fruit grow on you. And the fig tree withered up and died. Now, until I had an Amplified Bible, which gives me a little better understanding, I used to just feel sorry for that fig tree. I thought, well, okay, you're hungry. You get mad at the fig tree because it can't give you what you want, so you curse it and it dies. I, I, I wasn't getting it, you know. And then a little deeper study and understanding taught me that with fig trees, when you see leaves, there's always supposed to be fruit under the leaves. Hello. Hello. Now, let's just back up to the garden for a minute and say that Adam tried to make it with just leaves, too, and it didn't work. <laughs> and all a lot of Christians have, and all I had for a lot of years was leaves. You say, what do you mean leaves? I went to church. I had a church leaf. I read one chapter of the Bible every day, whether I needed to or not. I had a, I had a Bible reading leaf. Come on. I knelt down by my bed for just a few minutes every night, and I said the exact same prayer. Father, help me be a good wife, a good mother, and most of all, a good Christian. And that was it. That was my prayer life. Oh, and then I also said this. Forgive me, God. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I, I, I prayed that same thing over and over and over and over and over. Forgive me for all my sins. And I was thinking about all this stuff in the past. And, you know, then finally, after about 20 years of carrying on like a crazy person like that, I finally heard the Holy Ghost say, I forgave you the first time you asked me. Well, you... Well, you just take it and go on. But see, you're not going to hear God if you don't have any close fellowship and connection with Him. So I had a lot of leaves. I had a little church work leaf. And then even as I got into a little more of the Word and was walking in a little bit of the power of the Holy Spirit, I got some more leaves. I had some Christian jewelry leaves. I had a cross and a big rhinestone Jesus pin. I got a bumper sticker leaf, and I had that. Come on, are you with me? But here's the problem. I had no fruit. 
I was like a fig tree that was all leaves and no fruit. And the world was hungry. And what a lesson this fig tree gives us. Jesus cursed this fig tree because it was a phony. And he doesn't appreciate phony people who appear to be something that in reality they're not. You know, we need to really value the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives by walking with Him and letting Him lead us in every single area of life. We are in Madagascar today and I want to show you something really beautiful. These are children who are part of the Hand of Hope feeding program here in this village. They receive a solid meal every day. Now, let me tell you, sometimes when you hear one meal a day, is that really much? It is so much more than you can even imagine. Look at these children. They're seated at a table where they are served a, a good, solid meal. And when their bellies are filled, that's something that cannot be taken away from them. But it's even more than that. They're receiving love and respect. They need to understand that they are valuable and that there is a God out there who knows them and loves them and has a good plan for their life. You're part of making all that happen. It's a lot more than you think it is when you look at it. And we appreciate so much what you do through Hand of Hope to help us help these kids.